Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here in New Jersey on Delaware Bay near Cape May, where a 480 million year old ritual is being played out right in front of my eyes. This is one of the most incredible biological events I have ever seen. This is going to be part two of a three part series on horseshoe crabs. And in this episode, I'm going to address the biology of horseshoe crabs and explain what is going on here. There are thousands and thousands of horseshoe crabs piling up on the shoreline on this late night with a full moon and a high tide. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So I'm actually here on Delaware Bay with a group of people that have been organized by the American Littoral Society who host annual tagging events that volunteers and the public can participate in. Check my description for more information on that. Today's group is led by Shane Godshell, who's the Habitat Restoration Project Manager, and Tony Rose Tablante, who's the Habitat Restoration Technician, both with the American Littoral Society. Right now, it's about 11 o'clock at night on a full moon at almost the peak of a high tide. As I looked up and down the beach just after dusk, I could see these horseshoe crabs piling up on the beachfront as far as I could see in either direction. This may be one of the oldest mating rituals in the world, played out like this each year for probably the last 480 million years. Try to wrap your brain around that. These are mature male and female horseshoe crabs that are between 10 and 20 years old. The males are here and if you to grab onto a female in hopes they can fertilize her eggs. But before we get into the ritual of mating, let's take a quick look at some of the biology of the horseshoe crab. You can see the horseshoe crab looks like a big helmet and it's divided into three parts. The first frontal part is called the prostoma, the second part is called the opisthosoma, and the last part is the tail called the telson. And this formidable looking tail is not a weapon, but more of a lever to right itself when it's in shallow water or getting dumped over by waves. And it's also used to steer. These organisms not only crawl on the bottom, but they can swim upside down for considerable distances. They have two prominent compound eyes and eight other light detection centers that are both on top of the body as well as underneath the body. Horseshoe crabs really have few predators. They're mostly made up of this hard chitin, which is the same material in your fingernails and makes up the exoskeleton of all arthropods. And they don't have much meat in them compared to crabs that we enjoy eating. If you break open a leg on a horseshoe crab, you're not gonna find much meat in there. So they're not highly desired by predators and it's just too hard for them to get anything nutrition out of them. So they're really not preyed upon very much. It's clear that horseshoe crabs are arthropods in the group with insects and crustaceans and spiders and crabs that have jointed exoskeletons. However, horseshoe crabs are not crabs at all. They're not related to crabs. They're more closely related to spiders and scorpions than they are to crabs. So their name is really a misnomer. They're classified in their own separate family that includes four species worldwide. During the course of the year, horseshoe crabs can be found prowling along the ocean floor in about 60 to 70 feet of water, feeding on mollusks and worms that they can stir up with their many legs in the sandy or muttery bottom of their habitat. Their mouth is located strangely right here in the middle of all these legs. And these legs actually help gather the food, push it towards the mouth, and actually grind it up so that tiny little sensors can move it into the mouth cavity and it can be swallowed. The horseshoe crabs have five pairs of legs that all seem to be in constant motion. And they look all the same when you first glance at them. 
They ha some of them have pinchers on them, but the pinchers aren't strong enough to hurt you. If you look more closely, you can see that the rearmost pair of legs almost look like they have feathery appendages, and they're designed to help propel the crab forward. Here on the beachfront at this moment are only mature male and female crabs that are at least 10 years old and may have gone through as many as 16 molts in their lifetime to reach this point. The males are smaller than the females, and on their last molt, their front pair of legs develop a somewhat boxing glove looking structure that's used to grasp the back of the female when mating. When a male grabs onto the female, you'll see that he's not going to let it go. It's gonna take considerable effort to disengage him from that female he worked so hard to grab onto. Other males may try to disengage him, but he's gonna hang on. And here, Tony Rose Tablante shows us just how strongly they bond to the female. At the very highest of tides, the females are going to move into the sand and dig in and lay eggs with the male fertilizing them. The female may have five or six other satellite males around her at any time that she's laying eggs. And so these males may also contribute to the fertilization of her eggs. Into the sand, she'll deposit up to 5,000 eggs at a time and may lay as many as 40,000 to 180,000 eggs during this egg laying event. Tiny larvae will hatch from the eggs in about two weeks and they'll ride the next high tide after they hatch back down into the beach into the ocean. Horseshoe crabs are known as keystone species that has many other species rely on them for their survival. When horseshoe crab populations are down, populations of other organisms may be down as well. And a great example of this is the endangered red knot bird, whose nutrition for migration depends on the egg production of these horseshoe crabs. I'm grateful to have participated in this event with the American Littoral Society and be able to witness this incredible event, uh, really a once in a lifetime opportunity. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. This was part two of a three part episode on horseshoe crabs. In part one, I discussed why this species is at risk after 480 million years on the planet. And in the next episode, part three, we'll talk about how you tag a horseshoe crab. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe and give me a like and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.